things are made good, ends or objects or states of affairs of the world are made good when someone rationally wills them. That is, when they will that object or that end or that state of affairs on the basis of a maxim that has the capacity to be universalized. That is, uh, what you, so what makes an act of willing rational is simply that it's on a maxim that could possibly serve to make the end of that maxim good. So ends are made good through rational will, not the other way around. But now it turns out, with the formula of humanity, that there are certain necessary ends certain ends that are rationally required. And these are human beings, rational wills, generally considered as ends in themselves. So these are not this idea of someone, something being an end in itself. This is not a state of affairs to be achieved. It's not an end that we aim at producing. Um, so it's still true that there are no objects, no states of affairs, no ends, that all moral actions aim at producing. Still, human, human beings and rational wills generally, Kant says, are intrinsically valuable, valuable in themselves, as ends in themselves. And this means that we must not act to undermine the capacity of rational wills to set and pursue their own ends rationally. Um, so this is what it means, this is what it would mean to um, fail to treat someone as an end in itself, um, undermining the capacity to set and to pursue their ends rationally. But in addition, their happiness, that is, the ends that they actually pursue, at least when they do so rationally, um, are made good through their rational will. And so we must recognize that too. Part of recognizing someone as an end in himself is recognizing their capacity to make ends objectively good when rationally good. I should say one more time. And this is not because we know ahead of time that their happiness is intrinsically good. As I just said, it's only the ends that they rationally will that are objectively good. And the ends that they rationally will are the ends that they will on the basis of a maxim that could possibly serve to make their ends good. Okay. Um, and so now with this idea of rationally necessary ends, we can come back to the, the, the four examples that we saw with the formula of universal law. Uh, and the example, uh, these examples are not supposed to be trying to convince someone that doesn't know whether these things are right or wrong. He's assuming we all agree that in all the four of these cases, the action is wrong. The goal is to show how they're connected to the formula of humanity. Okay, so the first one, and these are the same four examples um, now viewed through the lens of the formula of humanity. So the self, first example is self-murder. Once again, notice that the case we're, we're considering is committing suicide, quote, in order to escape from a troublesome condition. So if we do that, Kant thinks it's clear that we're using a person as a means, meaning ourselves, we're using a person as a means to preserve a bearable condition up to the end of life. So we're using ourselves in order merely to satisfy the desires that we happen to have, rather than respecting our capacity to set ends and rationally pursue them. In fact, we're precisely extinguishing that capacity. We're precisely preventing ourselves from setting and pursuing ends. Because when you're 
dead and can't do that. Um, okay. Um, the lying promise example. Um, so again, we're considering a case in which we make a promise with no intention of keeping it in order to satisfy some desire, some inclination, some empirical inclination that we happen to have. And in this case, we might say that um, we are pursuing our ends by manipulating the other person. We're acting behind her back, so to speak, behind the back of her reason. So in making a false promise to somebody, we're manipulating her in a way that prevents her from rationally willing and pursuing her own ends. Um, so we're not respecting such a person as an end in herself. Uh, we're using her as if she were simply a means to achieve our end, rather than what? Rather than respecting her ability to set and pursue her own ends rationally. So falsely representing our intention to her is undermining her capacity to act rationally. Um, given uh, her own answer. Third example is to develop one's own talents. Um, he says on 42 at 430. Um, so further down on the page. It's not enough that the action not conflict with humanity in our person as an end in itself. It's not enough that we not kill ourselves, essentially. It must also harmonize with it, harmonize with our rational pursuit of ends. Um, in other words, uh, respect for a person, in this case ourselves, requires more than not just undermining the ends that we and other people rationally give ourselves. We need to develop our abilities actually to achieve the ends. Otherwise, this wouldn't be willing our ends, it would be merely wishing for an end. And this means developing our talents. So this argument, I think you can see shading over into a kind of prudential argument that developing our talents is necessary in order better to be able to achieve our ends. I think this is probably why, I mentioned last time, why Kant had some doubts in his lectures about whether this actually is a moral duty or not, rather than a prudential argument, a concern of prudential rationality. Um, but on the other hand, remember that respect for an agent requires recognizing her ends as valuable. This means taking the rational steps to pursue those ends. And this applies to our own case as well. Um, so we do get a kind of um, argument for a duty to develop the means at our disposal to pursue our ends rationally. And finally, more dramatically, um, respect for human beings as ends in themselves requires that we assist others in trying to achieve their rational and reasonable ends as well. So respect requires, bottom of the page, um, that we, um, very last line on page 42, that we also uh, try as far as one can to advance the ends of others. And of course he means here the permissible ends. Bank robber who's acting on a bad maxim, a maxim that cannot be reversalized, uh, has certain ends of satisfying his inclinations by robbing the bank. We don't have to assist him.